The breaking news is Moderna releasing its results so far in its stage three clinical trials, its late stage clinical trials, and they are looking very strong, 94.5% effective at this point in the trial. So Moderna has always been one of the leading candidates. It's working with the National Institutes of Health in the United States. This is based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And as this news breaks, how fortunate we have Dr. Christopher Labos in with us this morning. We've abandoned all other subjects, Dr. Labos, and we're going to talk about this. He's an epidemiologist and cardiologist based in Montreal. Will you just go through with me, Dr. Labos, the details that we're getting from Moderna about uh, this particular breaking news, and then we'll interpret it, try to make sure everyone understands what we're talking about again. Number one, here we are. We had Moderna just moments ago. We had Pfizer last week. We have two companies now saying they have very encouraging, in fact, very encouraging results from their vaccine candidate. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, these are still the interim analyses, so we'll have to see when the final reports uh, get published. Uh, but it looks as if both of these vaccines are going to work, and very likely both of these vaccines are going to be rolling out probably early in 2021 if we expect the final results at some point in December, as has been predicted. So, yes, I mean, they look to be applying for emergency use authorization later on this month and could be coming along stream. Can I look at some of the details here? So this is a vaccine that works like the Pfizer vaccine. It looks like they have the same kind of approach. Is that how, how you're understanding it? Yes, exactly. These are both mRNA vaccines, which means that you know, m most vaccines, the way they work is you take a virus or a bacteria, you either kill it or inactivate it or cut it up, and then you give that to the person via a vaccine. And so then their immune system makes antibodies against that bacteria or virus or that portion of bacteria or virus. The way these vaccines work, which is completely new, rather than giving you a piece or a part or, or a killed version of the virus, they're actually giving you the genetic material of the virus. Your cells then make the spike protein, the part of the virus that infects your cells, and then you make antibodies against that spike protein. So it's a completely different and a completely new way to make a vaccine, but it seems to work and it seems to be very highly effective. As we said, about 90% for the Pfizer vaccine and this morning with Moderna, 94.5%. So there's a couple of interesting numbers that I'd like to get you to, to analyze for us. They looked at their group, they had this big stage three clinical trial going on and 95 of the patients developed infections. This is looking at how well it protects people. 95 people developed infections. But then they found out that all but five of them were people who were on the placebo. So does that, and also, here's another thing, all 11 severe cases were placebo recipients. So does that indicate strong protection? Can you interpret that for us? Yes, absolutely. It means that, again, the way this study was done, there were about 30,000 people in the study. 15,000 got the placebo, 15,000 got the vaccine. Um, if you got the vaccine, you were much less likely to get sick and also much, much less likely to actually have a severe infection. So it looks like this, this virus really does prevent you from getting sick. And more importantly, it prevents severe disease, which is what lands people in the hospital, puts people in the ICU and uses up, uses up medical resources. So the vaccine, maybe it won't protect you 100 percent, it only protects you 94 percent, which is still pretty good in my books. But the, I think the, the even more important thing is that it protects you against severe illness, so that if you get sick, it'll be, a, it'll be a mild illness and keep you out of hospital, which is also very, very important. So far, they found no significant safety concerns, side effects that resemble what you might feel after a flu shot. Mm -hmm. And come back just to this effectiveness rate, though, because we always understood going back a couple of months that the best we could hope for was maybe 50, 60 percent. Now we have two more than 90 percent. I mean, what does that yeah. signal? How much more encouraging is this, I guess? Well, uh, significantly so. I mean, when you talk about the flu vaccine, that varies from year to year because it's a different flu strain year to year. Uh, but you don't see 90 percent effectiveness. You see you know, somewhere around 60 to 70 percent depending on the year, somewhere between 50 and 70 percent, let's say. And so that's what most people were thinking of, because it, the thinking was that this was going to behave in much the same way the flu does. But uh, the, uh, the, the vaccines that have been developed seem to be much more effective. And so they're probably going to be a lot more useful in controlling the virus. The one thing we don't know is that if you get the vaccine, does that make you less likely to spread the virus? And we don't quite know that yet. Uh, okay. We'll see in the we'll see in the coming months. But in terms of preventing you from getting sick and keeping you out of hospital, 
this looks like this vaccine is really, really going to help with that. So that, as you just mentioned, one of the things that we need to watch, always have to, it's very promising. People get very hyped up over this, but there are caveats, there are cautions. And here's one that I'd like to conclude on. The distribution of all of this with the Pfizer vaccine, we were talking about how it requires super cold storage, minus 75, which makes it a little bit complicated, doable but complicated. This one, as I understand it, doesn't need to be that cold that long. How are you interpreting what Moderna is saying and what difference will that make? Yeah, so apparently the Moderna vaccine can be uh, stored in regular freezers, the kind that most uh, you know doctors' offices and pharmacies have. So it's going to make distribution a lot, lot easier. There was always some questions like, how are we going to distribute the Pfizer vaccine if we can't, you know, just give it out to family doctors and to pharmacies to vaccinate people? So it looks like with the Moderna vaccine, it probably will be able to use a more traditional rollout. And maybe the Pfizer vaccine is going to be used only in uh, hospitalized settings. I, I, we're just speculating at this point. But at least with the Moderna vaccine, you don't have that logistical hurdle. So it looks like it's going to be a lot easier from the practical sense to get out to the public and to vaccinate them. Okay, out of time for this, but just before you go, I mean, is this a good start to another week? We had Pfizer yes, last very, Monday and we have Moderna on this Monday and I wanna just know overall if this is a good day. This is a very good day. I'm in a very good mood this morning. Okay, <laughs> that's a great start for us then too, Dr. Lavos. Thank you very much from Montreal.